Hello everyone and welcome back to Don't Starve. As you saw in my last little snippet, I'm not even going to call that an episode, it was a snippet. However, if you saw that, you saw that we came to our unfortunate end at the hands of a sneakily ninja hiding heat infested beefalo who decided to sneak attack us while we were busy looking at new rock graphics because I am easily entertained and I'm a geologist, you know, got caught looking at those rocks. Anyways, so, what we're going to do now is let's go to play. And I think what we shall do is we'll go to a new empty world. You can see I've got other games going. They're just playing around with the different modes. And I think what we'll do is we'll do a custom... Well, I'm not sure which I should do. Let's do a sandbox custom game. There we are. And taking a look through here, the only thing that I really want to expand out is we're going to take a look at the world. And only winter. Good God. That would be brutal. So let's go ahead and we'll leave everything default, but we'll make the world a little bit larger. Let's make it huge. There's never any problem with making it huge. Let's go ahead and do that so that we always have enough roaming space in between lives. And we'll go ahead and hit OK there. And for this playthrough, honestly, still, my favorite character is Wilson, but I think the only people we haven't played yet is we haven't played the librarian, Wickerbottom. And from what I've heard, she actually seems kind of OP. She can craft the first level of items from anywhere. She doesn't need a research machine. That's at least what I have read without playing her. So we also have Wes, who would make the game a lot harder. He can't talk and has trouble staying alive. We have the bereaved Wendy, who has her friend Abigail. Well, we'll go with Wendy. Let's go with Wendy, since I've never played her before. We'll leave Wes for another time when we decide to play on hard mode. And we'll see what the world does here, and we'll see what it leaves us. This is going to be, honestly, one of the longest-running series that I've ever done. And there's Maxwell here to taunt us once again with his ridiculously expensive cigar, his 1920 suit. And so let's get started getting the things that we need straight off the bat. So if you've never seen the series before, if you've never watched me play this game before, you'll know. Well, you won't know. Other people will know, but you will not know that what I like to do my first day is to try and get 20 food, 20 sticks, and 20 logs. If you can really pull that off, it's going to be a great day for you up in Don't Starve. However, if you're a little deficient, if you don't make it quite to those goals, don't really worry about it. Those are really kind of suggestions. They're like the pirate code. You don't really follow them. If you don't make it, there's always time for adaptation. But we know now, what we didn't know before is how winter was going to affect us and examine a green mushroom. So we've been here for 12 seconds. I would hide too if I could. How depressing. And I get the feeling that Abigail is not going to be too humorous. I feel like she's probably just going to be ridiculously dark this whole time. She's just going to be a little black rain cloud. Unfortunately, since we died, all of our technology is no longer discovered. There's another mushroom. So uh, maybe mushrooms will be useful to us in the future. But for now, let's just spend our first day getting ready to roll out. Now, I may censor out or I may edit out some of the basic base building because I'm more interested in showing off features at this point. Like, I've done so many Let's Plays of this game that I feel like you guys probably know the general flow of my work queue and how I like to operate. However, I thought that was a hat on a stick for a second. I was like, oh, I can be a wizard. It's a little pink wizard hat. This is about to be the best day ever. Alas, it is not a wizard hat. I am not a wizard, Harry. I am woefully deficient in the magic department. If I had magic, honestly, I'm not sure if I would make LPs anymore. Or at least I might use my magic to kind of cheat and make LPs a little easier. Like, maybe I'd make, like, a doppelganger of myself. Like, I would be like, Magis... <laughs> Magicus Duplicum! Or something ridiculous and just, like, duplicate myself. And then have that person do the LPs. And then I would just, like... Maybe I would do the commentary because I love actually, never mind, I wouldn't duplicate myself. I love doing these from the top to the bottom. I actually love the fact that our days are back to normal. I did not like winter. Winter was fairly depressing for me. Winter was very difficult and actually pretty scary. It's a tough season to deal with and don't starve. And so I now feel like the entire game kind of orbits or revolves around the winter mechanic. If you don't get yourself stocked up on those kinds of things you're going to need before winter, I definitely ran into a problem with food and general safety, to be honest. If you find yourself insane in the winter, it also makes the whole thing worse. We've all seen The Shining and we know how that goes. Right now, we've actually almost got our 2020-2020 goal completed. Not quite, though. We are going to need some flints so that we can make our first axes. And once we get those going, we'll be ready to roll. We'll be ready to roll out and take care of business. 
Now, at this point, I'm probably going to be on my field trip. Like, I'm pre-recording this right now, and so I'm probably... Take solace in the fact, if your day is hard, know that I'm out in the desert somewhere sweating and just generally being pretty much warm and miserable while looking at limestones. And if you guys have ever... If you guys know what a limestone is, it's basically this generic gray, boring rock. The only thing really interesting about it is that it's made up of little critters from long, long ago. So when things die in the ocean, their shells will fall down to the bottom and it will create this kind of carbonate layer. And over time, you end up with limestone. And that's grossly oversimplifying the whole process. But really, I don't think you guys want to hear about little particulate matter falling to the bottom of the ocean and creating ridiculously long-lived layers of CaCO3. So... We're going to stay away from that topic right now because, honestly, if you're anything like me, the moment chemistry starts being brought up, like, you start hearing chemical formulas, you're like, and you instantly start yawning and kind of rubbing your eyes, and my eye twitch comes, what in the hell? Okay, so I guess that's my twin sister, Abigail. I like how it's pretty straightforward about who that is. Like, they don't try and sugarcoat it. They're like, listen, this is my dead sister. <laughs> it's like... Can you imagine what this girl's gonna be like later on in life when she actually has to date? Like, <laughs> you go on a first date and be like, oh, don't worry, that's just my dead sister Abigail. What? So your dead sister Abigail just hangs out? That noise that Abigail makes is slightly unnerving. I don't feel like Abigail is altogether friendly. Like, it seems like she just injured me, and she did. So I was one. I thought the tree attacked me for a second. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I thought that basically the first thing, if you want to know the first thing my mind snapped to when I got hit right there, was the tree has fire! The trees have learned how to make fire! Although trees seem to have a vested interest in not inventing fire, like, you can pretty well safely assume that given that combustion basically in this game requires a tree, that trees would avoid, I mean, it seems kind of cannibalistic. Like, if a tree uses another tree to make fire out of it, does that count as cannibalism? Or does that count more as just survivalism? Like, if I used another human being to make a fire, I think you could argue that it was probably murder and or cannibal. I guess cannibalism requires you to eat the other. So I guess it would basically be tree murder. Trees would be running around murdering one another. But, let's move on here. Let's make sure we have enough flint. We have enough logs and things of that nature. We have loads of food right now. And actually, most of this is probably going to rot before we ever make use of it. So I'll leave the rest of these carrots. The berries regrow, so they're a renewable resource. If you're new to the game, berries will regrow after a short amount of time. A relatively short amount of time. Like, it won't happen overnight. So don't come back to visit every other day. But, I think every, like, four to five days you should get some more berries. But, in any situation, we've got a nice fistful of berries right now, which hopefully we can get ourselves set up to cook. Just like, <laughs> just like Walter White, we need to be ready and up and running to cook as soon as possible in order to ensure our survival. Are you guys Breaking Bad fans? Because honestly, I'm not trying to jump on a bandwagon here, but I think Breaking Bad may be the greatest television that I have ever viewed. Like, there's a difference between when I watch Breaking Bad. Oh god, we need to make a campfire, so let's get going here. There we are. And there's a difference between when I watch Breaking Bad and when I watch other shows. Like, I sit on the tips of my buttocks when I watch, like, I actually, I flex so that my buttocks come to, like, distinct points. And then I sit upon those points while I watch Breaking Bad. And it's not the same kind of situation that I get when I used to watch Lost. Like, I used to watch Lost and I'd be like, damn it, that an that this episode literally served no function. You have answered no questions, and you have supplied me with, like, 638 more questions. I am now more confused than I was before I started the series, and I just dwelled in a state of constant confusion. But Breaking Bad, for whatever reason, it answers your questions, like, episode by episode. It's stepwise. Like, you get a new question, they answer the new question within a few episodes, and you're like, oh my god, I need to know the answer to the new questions, or, like, how are they going to survive? And so, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad, I strongly recommend you go watch it it's like one of my favorite drama shows of all time and I know I sound like a giant fanboy idiot right now but really it is great television and if you're not watching it you're missing out trust me so let's take a look at our map here and plot out what we're gonna do for the next day it looks like we've got a pretty big biome here and I'm thinking circling around this way I'm gonna see if there's a prairie right here off to my left on the other side of this forest because I see a little orange inking of something on the map. So we're gonna check that out, but we've got a couple seconds left of nighttime, so we're just gonna run in circles. Do 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 do. You would think 
that Abigail, or I'm sorry, Wendy, you would think that Wendy, given that she has an undead sister that follows her around, will be slightly more immune to going insane, or possibly she would get more insane because obviously, oh, this is the opposite of what I like. So it looks like we can only gather mushrooms during the nighttime, possibly, or maybe I have to use a shovel to dig them up. So we've got a swamp biome over there. We're going to ignore that entirely. So if you're a new player and you're just coming into my LP series, because I feel like this is probably the series that most of you know me from. It's either here or from towns. I mean, everything else, eh, not too much exposure, but these are the ones that I actively plug to people. I probably should have cooked some food. Let's go ahead and cook some berries real quickly, really quickly, if you wanted to cooking quickly. I don't know if you can put two adverbs next to each other. I'm not going to think about it for too long because I'm not in fifth grade anymore and I don't need to think about things like that. If you're in fifth grade, I apologize. I remember back in the day, they used to make you do those little diagrams of sentences. You guys remember those? Those were awful. I think I bullshitted every one of those I ever did. Like, I just drew like some lines and then because I'm kind of obsessed with symmetry, I was like, oh, well, I'll make this symmetrical over here. And apparently it worked because I never got held back from fifth grade. So I guess it worked out fine. Now, Another thing that I'd like to mention before we move too much more... Oh, God, we found them right away. So, what I was going to mention is that we need to find beefalo herds as quickly as possible from the beginning of the game. Now, we seem to have struck lucky here, and that is really, really, really good. If you can't find a beefalo herd, it kind of puts the cock block on your entire situation. It basically slows your game down. Basically, your game becomes retarded. It is slowed down like molasses down a cold hill. Now, because we have found beefaloes up and early, what that means is we have a steady supply of poopa loops that we can pick up and basically use to fertilize our fields and get things going. We also need to now, the second goal that we need to find for ourselves is to find some mining nodes. Now, up north, I noticed that there was a number of mining nodes that we can probably take advantage of, that we can probably exploit to get some gold nuggets, which is part number two. Because we died, we didn't bring gold nuggets into this map as we normally would have. Also, when you're selecting manure, if you're a newer player, I like to do this. Whenever I start a new series, I like to assume that everyone coming in with me is new. So, you know, if you're a veteran of the game, I apologize, but I'd like to just share some of my insights with you that have helped me survive. I've broken 50, 60 days, which I know compared to some of the people on the internet is like nothing, but really I feel like the hardest part of this game is making it past your first 20 days. And a lot of the time I quit when I get to like 60 days. So I have games running that really... I commit suicide because I get bored, but now that the game is starting to develop a lot more content density, I would like to do a really long running series where I try and go 300, 400 days, but until the final game is released, I probably won't attempt like a marathon run like that. What I'll probably do is keep doing these showcases basically, so every time we get a new patch I'll probably generate a new world and run around for a little bit. Those who are interested can check it out. But I am really interested in doing a hard mode marathon now that I can tailor my sandbox experience. What the hell is Nitra? What is Nitra? Herein lies the folly of man. What is it, like heroin? Can we just spend the rest of our time nodding off? I don't know what Nitra is. I'm going to assume that that's like an old medieval name for a current chemical compound. Maybe like saltpeter or something of that nature? I, like they call, I forget, saltpeter is something, but that's like the medieval name. I think Nitra is probably, I mean, it has the same prefix as nitroglycerin, so quite possibly, I don't know, maybe we can make bombs out of it or something. Wouldn't that be something? Herein lies the folly of man may be the quote that Alfred Nobel used when he invented it. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I just don't know, guys. I... I'm confused. Whenever there's new things, I'm a creature who likes to dwell in a state of constant stability like I don't deal with change very well and we didn't get much done today oh and this is an enormous prairie okay so I actually well enormous prairies can be both a mixed blessing and kind of a curse in that once you have the beefaloes exploited a large prairie biome is just more footwork you're going to have to cover hopefully we find a few more rocks before the end of the evening because we got no gold nuggets this time guys so Unfortunately, until we get gold nuggets, we can't start doing scientific research. Looks like we've got a secondary beefalo herd down here. If we could find a secondary and a tertiary, that would be really cool. Because then we could kind of bounce beneath the three once we have depleted their poopaloops. loops. 
and we really want to get a nice stockpile of poo before they go into heat the first time. If you watch my previous LP, you'll know that beefalo are especially dangerous when they're in mating season. They think that I just want to mate with all their women. Or I guess at this point, Wendy wants to mate with all their males. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to avoid that topic because it's making me feel a little pedo. So I'm not even going to discuss that. Let's head up north. And speaking of which, I got a pedometer. But when I read it, I thought it was like a pedo meter. And so <laughs> I walked up to a buddy of mine and I was like, oh, look, I got myself a pedo meter. And I was like, oh, beep, 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 beep. It's working. It's working <laughs> when I waved it in front of him. Anyways, just a little insight into what it's like to live within a close proximity of me. I, I purposefully mispronounce words all the time because I feel like a lot of humor can be found in emphasizing improper <laughs> syllables. <laughs> Luckily, you take a pedometer and turning it into a pinometer is much, much funnier than a device that measures your steps. So, okay, so there's a gold nugget. There's our first gold nougat. I love nougat. Those nougaty centers, whoo, those nougaty centers are tasty in the middle of candies. Now we don't have, eh, I'm gonna eat those seeds, whatever. We'll eat the seeds and let's grab the rest of the stone and hopefully, I like how they varied up the stone graphic now, how there's several different types of stone graphic at the moment. And so what I'll do is I'll head up north and maybe we'll set up camp right along the edges of this meadow because this meadow seems to have a lot of the things that I want in close proximity of my dwelling. So. We will set up a permanent campfire here, and for those of you that don't know, a permanent campfire, you can't spread forest fires from it. Like, things will catch fire. Oh, we have rain. Oh, dear. I wonder how that's going to affect my fire pit, or if it's going to cause it to deplete more rapidly. I have no idea, though. So let's go ahead, and we're going to take our science machine. And this time I'm going to try and kind of space things out a little better. What I'll do is we'll put our science machine... Maybe right here. We don't have any walls or anything of that nature yet, and I don't think you can build roofs. I would assume that with the addition of ridiculous rainfall, at some point they will add the ability to roof off your house and it'll just go translucent when you go inside, maybe. I don't know how this is going to affect our sanity either. I am letting our sanity drop off early, just so we can experiment with the effects of that, because I feel like we haven't fully plumbed the depths of our own minds yet. And you know what? Self-awareness is very important. So this is the end of our second night, which means I owe you a question of the day. Oh, God. I owe you a question of the day, which is your favorite fictional character. And so I'm going to let you go ahead and think about that. My favorite fictional character, this is a tough one. It's either Ender Wigan from the Ender's Game books. Or B, it may be a tag team duo, Gotrek and Felix, from William King's Gotrek and Felix books. I love trash fantasy. I've brought this up in the past, so there it is. Who's your favorite fictional character? So throw that down in the comments, and we will discuss all the characters that you haven't thought about in a long time. Or maybe you think about them all the time. I don't know. I don't know how frequently you ponder things of that nature. So in any case, throw that down in the comments, and we will discuss it. And it looks like the jer the driving rack, the jerkiest of racks. Yes, his temperament is quite foul. Nobody likes to hang out with a jerky rack. <laughs> da da puns. The easiest form of comedy. Thank you, puns. Thank you for helping my comedy flow. Now, as soon as this morning decides to drop, there we are. We'll make ourselves another... Well, we've got a pickaxe here that we need to get rid of. We also need to make ourselves a shovel. So let's go ahead. We'll drop some of our manure here. And we will go ahead and make ourselves a shovel so that we can start building our base. And actually, this is probably the quickest that I've ever worked at the beginning of an LP. So we're going to start digging up all these things that we can relocate. If you have a shovel and you're new to the game, the shovel is going to allow you to relocate a lot of the things you want for comfort. So you're going to want to make yourself a sizable berry farm. Some people call this exploitation, but really, if you have it in the game, why not use it? Why not use the resources you have on hand? And what I'm also going to do is start planting my fields. There we are. We'll make our fields of evergreens, our evergreen fields, if you will, so that we can have that nice piney smell every day when we wake up in the morning. That's one of my favorite things about camping in the forest is that lovely, lovely piney smell. Now, the piney smell can go too far. They make several house cleaning reagents that are disgusting, like... There is something gross that they put. I have these kind of... All, I kind of went through an all-natural phase where I was like, all right, I'm not going to use any detergents or anything like that. And I started buying these detergents and things that are supposedly made. They have, like, no phenolphthalenes in them. And just a fun fact, a phenolphthalene 
is the thing in aspirin that makes your tummy hurt if you take too much of it. Anyways, it's phenol chains, but enough chemistry. We're not going to talk about chemistry. I don't want to bore you. Splattercat, shut up. Nobody talk about chem- shh, shh, nobody talk about chemistry. Anyways, I've just got chemistry on the brain because I am literally getting destroyed with acid base buffers right now. Like, this is like the worst period of my life. Like, the worst chemistry period of my life. Like, if any of you have, have had to study acid base buffers, how did you survive it? Like, really, because I go to class and my teacher's like, alright, today we're discussing it, and I'm like, zzz, 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 and I just instantly fall asleep. Like, KAs, KBs, who cares? <laughs> who cares? In any case, <laughs> and it's funny because I tell people I enjoy chemistry, like, I like chemistry, it's just the lectures that are just awful. I really, and I've got a really good teacher too, so it's not that his lectures are boring, it's just that the subject matter, the, the subject matter diddles the line that I can maintain my attention at. It diddles it. It diddles it in a most promiscuous manner. So, <laughs> we've got beehives here. Those are gonna be useful in just a little bit. Getting back to the game, I have this horrible, horrible habit of just letting my mind wander. My brain, my brain gets wanderlust. It's a character flaw. And now, we need to find a Badlands biome as well. I'm willing to bet there's one right across this river so we can get some more gold, which is going to allow us to make some of the more advanced scientific machines, which is then going to render our alchemy engine obsolete. Because once you have real science, you no longer need alchemy. It's the natural progression of things. Alchemy is where we start. Real science is where we end. And maybe someday they will say that the real science we do now was the equivalent of alchemy. Have you ever thought about that? Like... What if everything we do now is the equivalent of what witchcraft was to people, like, long, long ago? Like, what if our scientific advances now are, like, kind of just inventing the wheel, like, in 2,000 years, if we're still around, if we haven't killed each other yet and we're still around? Because I feel strongly we'll probably kill each other pretty soon. Like, you know, it happens. But anyways, if we make it that far, I always think it's funny to think that maybe the microprocessor, or like the transistor now, will be considered just like the most basic, like, because arguably the transistor may have been one of the greatest inventions, like, ever. But in any case, like, in a thousand years, they'll be like, oh my god, the transistor, that's so, that's so primitive. I haven't talked about a transistor, we don't use those anymore, we use doodads, or whatever the hell it is they name the new thing that makes transistors look super weak. But... We've almost got enough gold now for a reasonable... We've gotten pretty lucky with our gold drops. I, I'm wondering if they buffed it a little bit. If they have buffed gold drops, that makes my life a little easier. And we are gathering up stone in larger supplies. That's going to be so we can cordon off our little housing area. Just so we can have a nice stone base. I built a base out of wood long, long ago. But wouldn't you know, but uh, it burned down. A hound actually decided to suicide bomb me. I had kind of a jihad... Hound. A Jihad Hound ran in, and I punched him in the face, and I thought that I had won. I was like, haha, Hound, I win. I punch you in the face. Because typically, when you punch something in the face, it kind of means you've won. Like, in a certain respect, it means you've kind of sort of won when you punch something in the face. But, alas, the Hound was like, Arr! and he just decided to blow himself up, and it burned down my entire base, which was very, very disappointing to me. So... We need to build our base out of stone. For those of you who are new to the series, you definitely want to build your base out of stone because it will burn down and you will cry yourself to sleep after your entire base burns down. And believe me, tears were it. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. But it was definitely a setback. And setbacks, we don't want setbacks. We want set forwards. If we can actually set ourselves a little bit forward, like I'm trying to move as quickly as possible this time in the LP while still being informational and slightly entertaining. But if I ever fail, feel free to just call me an idiot and just shout at me. Oh, our base is a long ways away. Hopefully we make it before the end of the night. But it's travel time, so this is going to be our final evening. So before we make it back to our base, I guess I will do my speech. So my name is Splattercat. I make LPs of survival slash indie games slash whatever else I find enjoyable. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're one of my longtime viewers, welcome. And if you're in the middle range somewhere, welcome back as well. I'm so happy to make these videos for you guys. And I hope you will choose to join me in the future. There will always be more videos. And there will be probably one a morning. I think that's the schedule I'm going to try and stick to forever. So if you enjoy the LPs, feel free to check back in. In a couple days, I'll have a few more episodes up. And take care out there, everybody.